So welcome, welcome to the the first of our of our series of uh, of coffee talks. Uh, I'm here with uh, with Robin Schaffer from from Nice Systems. Robin, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. So, Robin, we're we're going to have quite an informal uh, conversation to get, uh, today. A few people are going to be popping in and joining us through the through the through the call. Um, but really, what what we wanted to do in the in the call today was just have an opportunity to, to to start a series of conversations where we're where we're talking with you and, and other leaders in the in the analyst relations community firstly about you and your your career path how you've moved into uh, how you've moved into analyst relations and then also talking a little bit about the analyst relations forum which obviously you're, you're a member of the international advisory committee that, that's helping to uh, prepare for that um, and you know, I think we'll probably speak for around half an hour, maybe maybe a little bit uh, less than that, maybe a little bit more, depending on on, uh, on what happens. So, Robin, let, let me first uh, introduce you. I mean, obviously, lo lots of people will know uh, that you're in in that analyst relations role at Nice, and obviously, you've been at Nice now for I think it's ten. Is it coming up for ten years this month? I think it is. Yes, isn't it? actually, my my ten year anniversary is any day now. Wow. Well, well, congratulations. That's a, that's an amazing uh, accomplishment. But obviously, it's nothing compared to the dozen plus years before then that that you were at AT and T. So yes. that that gives you a really different perspective, I think, from from lots of people because you've been on that side of of really pushing through, you know, vertical strategy and really trying to get away from from selling in a product way to really selling in a much more client focused mm -hmm. kind of way in a much more holistic way and then at nice obviously you were in marketing communications for several years there and really pushing through you know events and marketing strategy and then coming into analyst relations after that experience you know i, I really guess that must have given you quite a different perspective uh from the way that that other people uh you know that many other people uh, are bringing with their backgrounds into uh, into analyst relations. Um, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would say that uh, that's a really interesting point, and I never thought of it that way. But certainly, I've had I've been doing analyst relations for six or seven years, and uh, as you mentioned before, that I had all kinds of roles, pretty much everything you can do in B two B marketing. Um, mostly focused on field, some some um, shape or form of field support. So I've had a ton of experience working with salespeople, and I think that may be the the piece that I find on a day to day basis brings me the most value and the most insight into what uh, what AR can bring. And I wonder, does the fact that somebody with your background and experience is put into an analyst relations role, I mean, what does that say about about Nice Systems? Because because I don't know. I mean, it could be, you know, that they that, that it, it could be like a, an expression of strength that they show that analyst relations is something that hugely benefits from being aligned to messaging and, and having people with logistical strength and so on, you know. Or it could be that you know they think, wow, you know, we we really don't really know what's going on in analyst relations. We need somebody who's like a, a Swiss army knife and who can do absolutely everything. And, oh, goodness, we, we need to cover our bases. You know, what, 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 what was the context for, for NICE? And what, you know, what was your route into doing, into doing analyst relations there? It, it was definitely the latter. Um, when I started, there was no analyst relations program. Uh, it was, or, or what it was, was completely reactive. So an analyst was doing a report, we would respond. They would reach out to us, and, and we would respond. But there was no uh, no thinking of analyst uh, AR as a strategic part of the marketing uh, toolkit. Um, I had been with Nice for three or four years in a bunch of different roles, and um, I think I had proved myself, you know, capable of taking on challenges, you know, where there was nothing established before. So I think it was. Um, the fact that they, they, meaning the management, didn't didn't really have a vision for what they wanted analyst relations to be, and they needed somebody that was going to create it for us. And they, you know, they saw me as somebody that could do that. And and I do think that the variety of of background was certainly part of why they tapped me on the shoulder. And were there? 
I mean, obviously, that, that's a very challenging situation. I mean, to come in with all of that experience and then suddenly to be to have all of that experience brought to bear in such a in such a focused area i I could imagine that could be quite quite frustrating um but then what what did you find so what, what did you find was the biggest challenge when you came into the role and then now you know what what do you think is the biggest challenge now in 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 activities for analyst relations people i mean have they is there a difference there between how it was and, and how it is or maybe for your individual well, experience and, and the broader experience of the community? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a great question, and I don't know that I can speak or my experience can speak to changes um, in the analyst relations role, you know, in general, and, and we all know that that role has changed. I can say from my perspective it's wildly different because I would say the first two years even, I was just trying to figure out what analyst relations really was and what I was supposed to be doing because I wasn't getting any guidance inside my company. As I mentioned, there was no vision for what AR needed to be and there was no guidance. And I stumbled around and luckily found you know, a few resources. Uh, the opportunity I had to connect with other AR people or um, you know, best practices uh, kinds of resources that were out there, some, you know, ebooks. I did take a class. So I was stumbling for the first couple of years, uh, really figuring it out. Um, I would say the last, then, then I kind of uh, it was on, kind of, kind of had it built and it was on, I would say kind of an autopilot where um, the, the viewpoint of the company was it was good enough and there, there wasn't a view that there was a lot more value we could get out of it. So I was kind of on maintenance mode. And then the last couple of years, I've had a very visionary um, leadership, some changes in leadership that totally gets what AR can be and has um, uh, inspired me to uh, take it to, you know, quote, unquote, the next level and turn it into something that is, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, a little bit passive to something that is really aggressively looking at how AR can build and show value, you know, very tangible value to the business. There was no uh, emphasis on that before a couple of years ago. And I definitely hear from peers, uh, particularly at the AR forum last year, that that's not uncommon, that that is going on with a lot of folks. So I've seen a huge difference in the six or seven years. A lot of it, some of it, just my growth, um, trying to work alone and, and piece this together, and part of it, new management team that, um, that, that got it and challenged me in a way I hadn't been challenged uh, you know, to deliver value. I mean, there's something that just strikes me listen, listening to that, which is that there's um, a certain kind of, process that perhaps nice has been about where where it shifted from being definitely something that, that could be described as a as a company that sold software into now i mean obviously still a firm that's in the software industry but a firm that's selling solutions you know that i really think of of nice as a firm that talks about having specific solutions for for operators or for law enforcement or you know really really specific to that and that I could imagine that there are that the industry must be littered with people who some of them have got a more up to date understanding of nice, some of them have got a more out of date idea of nice. Yes. I, I remember mentioning to you recently I, I came across this this IAAR presentation where mm-hmm. where Outsell talk about um, nice as being a market research firm, and I can kind of you know understand that in a way because you're in the process perhaps of like. Format, formatting data and selling that as a service, perhaps. But so lots of people with lots of different perspectives, and uh, and as your company moves, you know, on the one hand, you get you know advantages because people get a more accurate understanding of what you're offering. But then on the other hand, people who you're less in touch with get kind of a, a, a out of touch with what you're doing and get dislocated. I wonder, are there? Yeah. Is there something specific there? I mean, because I think in a way that's a problem that many people have now is more firms verticalize and sell solutions rather than selling products. Yeah, I think, I think what I have going on that might be very common for other people 
is so, so so first of all the part of nice that I work in is, is the majority of the company is a customer service uh, software and solutions company um, and the situation we're in is that we have a core business which is around uh, what's referred to as workforce optimization it's basically in contact centers managing the uh, the agents you know making sure that they're performing with quality and um, and uh, so forth so that's our core business. There's only one other major competitor. Between the two of us, we own 80% of the market. So from an AR perspective, what I'm trying to do there is fight tooth and nail with our competitor and uh, get the, uh, the upside of the perception of the analysts uh, in that business. So it's, it's not real exciting in that there's not um, a lot of new messages and new um, competitors and new things. And it's not very dynamic from an AR perspective. On the other hand, we are very quickly expanding way beyond that and are you know, getting into areas where we're not known at all and uh, where the reputation people have of us is completely inaccurate in terms of you know, very much what you said in terms of the, the value that we can offer. So what I find uh, now is a huge amount of introducing NICE to new analysts that are not in the core customer service uh, coverage area that might cover marketing or might cover our different verticals, as you mentioned, uh, might cover things like uh, uh, fraud uh, compliance issues that are you know, not specific to uh, the contact center but more enterprise-wide. So while I have one foot in a core business that still generates, you know, the most line share of our revenue, that is extremely established, you know, commoditized and trying to differentiate uh, to uh, the other world where we've got, um, uh, where we're expanding to new audiences and new solutions that's in some ways like a startup. You know, people don't know us. And we have to establish our reputation and fight against uh, a lot of competitors that, you know, many, many different competitors that we don't know and we need to learn about. So, you know, very different experience on both sides of that coin. So, it so I imagine like that there's a lot of um, companies out there that, you know, may have a core business that they treat in one way from an AR perspective and then other parts of their business that, you know, are like in some ways like a startup. And I, I think it's a similar situation for many firms that, you know, when I, you know, that when I start off asking them, you know, very often I'll say, what, what's your big focus for next year? And they will say, well, we're focused on this, this growth area and we've got this new solution and we're opening up in this area. And then I say, so most of your analyst relations going to be about that? And they say, no, most of our work has to be about the core, buzz, uh, about the core business because that's where we're getting our budget from, from the core business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think I think it's always difficult to say, you know, what what are your big focus areas for 2014? And then really see, you know, the difference between people's intentions and then actually what the business wants them to do consciously and what it wants them to, what, what, you know, what it pays for them to do, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I don't have conflicts inside my business that way. I think I'm fortunate that there's a lot of alignment around the balance that we need to cast. Um, between the old and the new, so to speak. So Some I'm not. Along. Um, I mean, there are cases where we're pushing things that aren't particularly interesting to the analysts, but from a business perspective, we're we're going to find a new spin on it. Um, but you know, I, I don't find I necessarily have that kind of challenge. So I, I think these are the kinds of issues that, that many people, you know, t t t were speaking about at last year's analyst relations forum, and mm. I think maybe that's a good time to kind of to kind of work work, work over onto 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 that topic. Obviously, we've just published uh, analystrelationsforum.com, and registrations have started to come in for the for the forum, which is a two day event this year as last year, with the main forum day being on September the sixteenth, and the Analyst Relations Forum workshop, the Leaders Workshop, being on the on the seventeenth, the following day, uh, last year as last year, uh, sorry, last year as this year, the workshop is in Somerset House, 
that this year we we've kind of expanded the main forum day so moving next door into the original king's building at king's college london um, and we're going to have a much larger forum th th this year so i mean j just thinking back to last year's forum I mean, what, what was most useful about last year's forum for you what what, what were the what were the things that really stood out as being things that we got right last year um i I have to say probably the most typical answer to any kind of event like this is the the opportunity to interact with other AR people. So it's a very high level answer. But for me, and I know a lot of people are very isolated doing AR in a vacuum, thinking their, their same thoughts over and over again, um, struggling with the problems and trying to solve them the same ways. So for me to just get a jolt of uh, new ways to think about things um, was, in general, the, the biggest value. And from a specific content standpoint, I think the things, the areas that I found valuable, well, certainly most of the content for the day was best practices presentations on different topics. And some of the ones that were, that really hit home for me were things around AR and sales engagement because that happens to be my biggest focused area for 2014. I also found it um, really insightful to hear what people were doing around uh, using social as a channel for AR. So I would say, you know, I can't, when I came away, my head was swimming. In fact, there's a, a post on the AR forum, I believe it's still there because there were so many things I was thinking about and I didn't want to lose them. And you know how you come back in the whole Monday morning experience. You're, you're, you know, you're charged up and uh, at the event and you come back with ideas and then you get sucked into the reality of all the stuff on your desk Monday morning. And I didn't want to lose it, so I, uh, I documented it. You know, what did I learn and what am I going to do differently? And um, that really did help me carve out my uh, objectives and plans for 2014. One of the things that we that we've been very lucky about is to have had some fantastic sponsors for the event, and because of that, we've been able to keep the event free. So already this year, we have three sponsors: HFS Research, Greyhound Research, and Nelson Hall that have signed up again for uh, for for a second year, and and that allows us to really think a little bit more expansively about how we can perfect the, the AR forum, you know, and what we could do to improve it. And uh, as you said, you know, one of the key things is the ability to meet people. And the plan is that this year's forum will be about 50% bigger than last year. So that's many more connections and, and much more value in the, in the network of people that we're bringing together. But what else could we do to make the forum more, more, per, more perfect? You know, what, what would a, a perfect forum look like for you? Well, first and foremost, it comes down to the topics, you know, that we cover. And um, I would say the the fact that there would be uh, topics covered that are aligned with the things I'm hungry to learn about. And, and they still continue to be, as I mentioned, the whole uh, alignment with sales. So, so, you know, whatever that is, that's going to be different for each person. But having a rich um, variety of uh, content where we're presented um, what other people are doing and, and you know, telling their stories. So I think that's got to be my perfect uh, AR forum is rich with, uh, with that. And I know um, you did a, a poll to get topics from people. So hopefully we'll you know, come out with the, those that are of most interest to most people. But beyond that, um, I, a perfect forum for me would have a structured, without being corny, way for people to get to know each other better. Like there was a lot of informal networking, chatting with people, but um, I really like when there's some kind of um, introductory uh, you know, process where you, you really get a little bit more in depth with everybody in the room. You know, what are, you know, something like, you know, sharing what your, you know, what your expertise is in and what you're looking to learn. Now, if you got that from everybody in the room, you might um, really be able to zero in on the people you want to network with. So I would love to see that in a perfect forum. 
And then I'm always really big on the opportunity to take, you know, you're overwhelmed, like I said, with, you know, new ideas. And, um, you know, in most events, we're kind of passive. You know, you sit there, you sit for a day, you listen to great ideas, you know, it's spinning around in your head. And I love the opportunity to, to um, talk through those. Like maybe, you know, some of the events I've gone to that I've liked the most have had a part of the day where you take, you sort of chew on what you heard with other people. And you hear what it means to them, and you think through and process what it means to you. So you're kind of getting active with the information. So those are a couple of things, you know, what the perfect what a perfect event looks like to me. So I think one of the surprises that we had last year was that there was so much interest from outside the UK and even from outside Europe in attending the forum. So most of the most of the registrations that we had were from outside the UK and I think around a quarter, maybe a little bit more of the registrations that we had were from North America. Now, I know that one of the things that, that you're trying to do is get together uh, people to, to organize some local U.S. networking meetings. So, of course, it really depends on there being a, a critical mass of, of attendees and, and, and of people willing to, to, to organize them. But, you know, what, do you, um, what are your plans for those ideas? What would you like to see happen? And, and how can people help you if they're, if they're interested in trying to make those local meetings happen? That's something I'm really excited about because, you know, as I've you know, talked about, I obviously got a lot of value out of the AR Forum, looking forward very much to it coming up next year, and would like to do that more, you know, would like to have more of that opportunity and um, so I, you know, I, I thought, uh, I, I was really interested in having something in my area, and that's New York, New Jersey. So I kind of took the steps to reach out and, you know, identify, Duncan helped me identify a couple other people in my immediate area, and we're going to look to just hosting something informal, you know, maybe a, a presentation, a little, a little food, a little schmoozing, you know, not a big production, but a chance for people to get together uh, locally and meet each other. Um, and then there seemed to be interest in other areas. So I'm kind of de facto trying to help organize, which I'm really happy to do, and find uh, people that want to run events. Uh, it looks like we might have uh, one in Boston, in uh, Silicon Valley, in Southern California, in uh, uh, Dallas, these are areas that have popped up that seem to be people, you know, there, there's two things you need to have one of these. One is, as Duncan said, a critical mass of AR people. That doesn't have to be a huge number. I mean, I think even five or ten people getting together is usually valuable and somebody that's willing to organize it. So I'm still kind of reaching out. I'm trying to, trying to um, you know, find those people that want to organize, and then of course find the people that want to attend and participate. So at this point, if anybody you know has a different geography that they're interested in seeing what happen, or if they want to get involved in helping plan in one of those areas that I mentioned, you can uh, well reach out to me. But I'm also going to be posting information about it on the AR forum, so you can keep your eye there to see what's happening and. Um, it's the place that you can easy pay, place you could get in touch with me and share your enthusiasm for helping make this happen. As I said, I don't see it as a, a big production. I see it as a very low key kind of get together. And we were, you know, in my mind, we try to do it like in June. That sounds Maybe good. the beginning of June before people are off for the, the uh, summer, give us enough time to, you know, kind of coordinate and get together. Um, a good good time before the AR forum. So I'm excited about it because I know that there's a, a lot of people that can't, you know, make the trip to the UK. And you know, if it works out and there's interest, it's something I'm willing to do on a regular basis, a few times a year in my area. Now, Robin, I'm just waiting to see if, if there are any questions that people who have logged in using the GoToMeeting software 
want to type into the chat bar. But there's just one question that I want to, to, to pick up with you now. And, and as you just said, not everybody can make it to the, to the UK. And one of the things that, that we are wondering is about whether the AR forum next year should be in the United States, you know, or maybe we should think about having having regional events, you know, maybe something in North America and something in Singapore, you know, in, instead of doing one event in, in Europe. Do, do you have any feelings about whether or not the, the event should be, whether the event should be there? Uh, Dirk, I'm, I'm just going to mute you because there's some, some words there. Um, yeah, do you have any, any feelings about whether we should be uh, thinking about organizing the event in, in North America next year? I, I struggle to find a downside of doing that. I mean, I think that certainly there's tons of AR people in the U.S., and I think people have a much easier time traveling within the U.S. than getting overseas. So I think we would have, I, I mean, I can't speak for Singapore, but I think in the U.S. we would certainly be able to pull together a very successful event. You know, it comes down to time and effort, resources, people helping to plan, and um, you know, making it happen, getting sponsors, you know, the, the, all, all that goes behind what you guys have been doing uh, with, generously with your time. So uh, I don't see a downside. I see um, a lot of value doing one in the, in, in the U.S. next year. And obviously you're in New Jersey, so so it's a little bit of a of a trick question to ask you, you know, where you think we should host it. But where do you think it would be more successful? I mean, should we have it on the East Coast or on the West Coast or somewhere in the heartland? Where's what what, what would be your feeling about that? New Jersey, um, uh, of course. I think probably, and I don't know this for sure, but I would guess that the most volume of people would be on the West Coast. Um, I think there's, I think it's fair to say there's a lot more technology companies out there. Um, and that would be my gut instinct, is to do it on the West Coast. I think we would, you know, poll or something to get uh, a consensus on that. Good. So look, I think our half hour is, is, um, is, is more or less up. Um, I mean, I'm just wondering, just trying to draw, draw draw things together. You know, we started off the call thinking about kind of your early years of analyst relations at, at Nice and kind of where that's where that's led you to now. I mean, what, what do you what do you think we're, we're going to be focusing on? You know, maybe in one or two years' time. Do you think there's uh, Do you think there's a kind of journey that we're going to be going through as an analyst relations community? Just before you answer that, I should just uh, say to people we've been recording the call, so there will be, uh, so we'll be posting this recording somewhere. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where, um, but uh, but we'll be posting that. And obviously, we've recorded it for people who who, who couldn't make the call because there were a couple of people who, who couldn't do that. Um, but Robin, kind of looking ahead in your crystal ball, where, where do you think where do you think either dis the discussions might be different in a couple of years' time, or how do you think the forum itself might be different in a couple of years' time? It's interesting. I mean, it's it's. Um, I mean, I think some of the things that I've heard more often from other people in larger organizations that you know may have um, more of a of a sense of where it's going is that the whole role, of how the, the whole role of the analyst is changing and becoming not as influential, you know, is that, is that the case? Uh, I know there's a controversy around that. So how does uh, that affect, you know, how much we invest in these relationships? So I think that that's a big question, and uh, as time goes on, it'll be interesting to see the relationship between the analyst and the decision-making at, uh, you know, at enterprise organizations. Um, I think the way we interact with them will change. I'm not a good uh, example of this, but I know that um, there's many who've uh, really successfully jumped on the social interaction bandwagon and are finding uh, new ways to interact with analysts. And I think just as the world evolves, that will you know, undoubtedly continue. Um, those are the, the things that jump out at me. Oh, I think the third thing I would say is 
what uh, I've been seeing and I think a lot of people see is just more and more pressure to show business value, um, you know, to really show something tangible. And I think that will only grow. And we're going to have to be very focused on the activity, very focused on cutting out the, the work that seems like it's a good idea to do, but when you really peel back the layers and look at it under a certain microscope, you realize there's not enough business value in doing that. And then shift to other things that really are showing clear value to the business. Thank you. Thank you so much. So just a couple of final reminders for folk. If you go to analystrelationsforum.com, you can find out more about the event. You can 